Hello and welcome to part 2 of my Dwarf Fortress tutorial series. In this video, we are going to embark upon our very first fortress. Now, fair warning, it's around this time in the game that most people are scared off. But don't worry, as long as you follow my instructions, you'll be just fine. First things first, let's open up the game. And once we are here at the main menu, we are going to select Start Playing. From here, we are given three options, Door Fortress, Adventure, and Legends. We are going to select Door Fortress. At this point, the game is going to begin loading and bring up the in-game calendar to pass some in-game time. Once that's all said and done, you should be looking at the world screen. Now, don't let all the colorful symbols confuse you. We'll go over what everything means. Let's first take a look in the upper right hand corner here. At the top, we have the randomly generated name of the area. Next, we have the biome. Then we have the temperature. Trees determines how many trees are going to be in the area. Other vegetation just determines how many plants grow in that area. Surroundings determine the type of flora and fauna that appear in the area. Next, if there is a stream or a river, it will tell you here along with its dumb name. Now, moving down here to the bottom. Here we have the various resources which can be found in the particular area. There are six possible resources which may appear. Sand. This is very important for the glass making industry. Clay. Clay, as you may have guessed, is primarily used for pottery. Soil. Now, soil ties into sand and clay and just determines how deep they actually go before you start hitting rock. Shallow metal. This determines if ore will appear close to the surface, usually within two Z levels. Deep metal determines if ore will appear as you dig deeper underground. Fluxstone. Now, this is essential in the steel making process. For a complete list of your various fluxstones, just consult the wiki. For your first fort, we are going to look for a site with the following characteristics. For trees, either woodland or heavily forested. Surroundings, try to go for serene or calm, but failing that, just anything that isn't evil or a savage. And finally, a river for them delicious fishies. The rest really isn't mandatory, but it's still good to have if you can find it. For temperature, warm is usually the best, but anything that isn't freezing or scorching should suffice. So after using the arrow keys to find your ideal site, we are going to focus on this tiny little window here in the upper left hand corner of the screen. Here we have the local view of the map. If you look at the highlighted area there, that indicates the area you are embarking on. You may also notice the blue squiggles on the map. That indicates where the water is. And you may have also noticed that the default area it's trying to embark you on does not have any water in it. Now to reposition it over the water, this is where Dwarf Fortress controls get a little tricky. So here is a handy visual aid. Using U, H, K, and M, you can actually move that box so it can encompass the water, like so. Once you are satisfied with your location, press E to embark. Now that we have our destination selected, we must now prepare for our journey. Since this is our first time playing, we are just going to select play now. 
after that, it generates a little narrative for you. So feel free to read it out in your loudest, most dramatic voice for ultimate immersion. The first thing you're going to want to do as soon as the world pops up is press spacebar to pause the game. Now you can get your bearings and navigate around the map using the arrow keys. Before we continue, let's go into a few basics on exactly how this wacky game actually works. First, this isn't an RTS. You cannot directly control the dwarves. You are more of an invisible overseer. You can issue commands and the dwarves will carry out those commands to the best of their ability. If you want your dwarves to survive, you have to manage three things. Mood, food, and drink. Mood is probably the most complicated and I could do an entire video on it. But the main thing is keep dwarves happy. Sad dwarves throw tantrums. When other dwarves see a dwarf throwing tantrums, they get bad mood, and they may also throw a tantrum, and then suddenly, your entire fortress is throwing temper tantrums, and goblins invade, and shit goes to hell. Food. Much like you and me, dwarves are required to eat, and trust me, dwarves will eat some gross things. And finally, drink. Dwarves prefer booze, and they can pretty much make booze out of anything. They can drink water, but water will make them sad. And again, sad dwarves lead to temper tantrums, which leads to the end of dwarf kind. So beware. Take a minute to survey your new surroundings, and you may notice we have beautiful Viridian fields instead of that horrible ASCII art. Aren't you glad you got that graphics pack now? The blue seven and sixes you may see flowing are the water, that just indicates how deep they are. And that black area you may see on the map is the underground, and we are going to dig in there in just a moment. Now that you're familiar with the area, we are going to strike the earth. So let's dig some holes. First, you're going to want to press the lowercase d for designations. Once you see this menu, press d again to select mine. Using the arrow keys to position the cursor, press enter to decide where you're going to begin digging. Then use the arrow keys to determine the size and shape of the area you wish to dig. If you want to make things easier, just emulate the digging pattern I'm creating here and everything will make sense soon enough. The designation menu can be used for other things such as gathering plants or, in this case, chopping down some trees. So to chop down a tree, we are going to press the D button again and this time select T. Then look for the icons on the map that look like tree trunks. Those are the trees. So select those and press enter. Now that we've issued our orders, let's press spacebar to unpause the game and watch as our dwarves carry them out. There they go! There goes our happy little miner going to dig his holes and there is the woodcutter going to cut down some trees. Once your miner is done digging, you should have something like this. You see this giant room we built? This is going to be our main stop pile. This is where the dwarves are going to keep a majority of their belongings, such as metal bars, wood, furniture, or any knickknacks they may end up making. Otherwise, they'll just leave their crap scattered on the ground, like you see now. To create a stockpile, you are going to push the lowercase p for stock pile. Here you can see the different type of stockpiles you can make. Most of them are fairly self-explanatory. 
However, since this is going to be our main stockpile, we are going to customize this a little bit. Now, this can be done by pressing the lowercase t button to configure our custom stockpile. On this screen, we can see the various items we are allowed in our stockpile. By default, nothing is selected, so let's go about selecting a few things. Using the up and down arrow keys to select the items, press the lowercase e to select or enable a particular item, or D to deselect or disable a particular item. For our first stockpile, we are going to enable everything except refuse and corpses. Refuse is mostly your dead animal bits such as fur and teeth, and corpses are just dead bodies. These are two things we don't want inside our fortress stinking up the place. Once you are done, press escape to go back to the stockpile menu. This time, we're going to press C for our custom stockpile we just created. Move the blinking cursor to one of the corners of the big room and press enter. Then, using the arrow keys, stretch the stockpile so it fills the giant room completely. Press enter again to confirm. Then sit back and watch those lazy dwarves haul their junk inside. Next, we're going to build a second stockpile outside the fortress for our refuse, corpses, and other assorted detritus. This will help prevent any stinky surprises for our fort. Using the same method as before, we're going to make a new custom stockpile by pressing P, then T, this time, we're going to disable everything except refuse and corpses. Press escape, and then C to start making your new stockpile for your dead bits. Find an accessible location outside your fortress you want to make for your new bone garden. Again, press enter to select your starting corner. Use the arrow keys to select the ending corner, and press enter to finish your new stockpile. Gross. The last bit of organization we're going to do are activity zones. We are going to create two activity zones in particular. A pasture for our livestock and a small meeting area for our dwarves to hang out so they don't stand out in the rain and cry all day. To designate an area as a zone, First press the lowercase i button for zones. We're going to start with a pasture, so make sure you find a large open area full of greenery for your animals to graze on. And the same method as creating our stockpiles earlier, move the cursor to the starting corner and use the arrow keys to position the ending corner. Once this is done, press enter to create your zone. After you finish, you'll see this menu here with your various zone options. Remember, we are creating a pasture, so press lowercase n for pen slash pastures. Now with this selected, you're going to want to press uppercase n, that is shift n, to designate which animals you wish to place there. Cats and dogs can be left alone to their own devices, so for now select any remaining animals that you have that aren't cats or dogs. Once you're happy with your selection, press escape, and your doors will begin dragging the animals to their new home. Next, we're going to create another zone, this time the meeting hall. As before, create a zone inside where you dug out earlier. Once that's done, you're going to press M this time to designate it as a meeting zone. Now when dwarves don't have anything better to do, they will stay underneath their dry, warm mountain instead of standing out in the rain and being moody about it. Well folks, that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like and feel free to subscribe to my channel for future Dwarf Fortress videos and consider donating to my Patreon. It really helps out. If you have any questions, comment down below and I'll see you next time.